On January 16th of this year, Gene Cernan died. Gene Cernan was a commander of Apollo 17, and he holds the dubious distinction of being the last person to step foot on the moon. He's like Neil Armstrong, but opposite. Today, there are only six people alive who have walked on the moon. It's probably the most exclusive club in the world. But that was in 1972. It's been 45 years since a human being has stepped on a celestial body outside of Earth. Now, it doesn't take a genius to know that the race to the moon was really about Cold War politics, but our drive to colonize other places in the solar system has really never waned. So in this video, I'm gonna just imagine what if we got our shiz together and actually began to spread out amongst the solar system. Here are six best options. And stick around for my number one, because you're gonna wanna fight me on it. Bring it on. Archie asked, Joe, please do a video on the future human colonization of various planets and moons. Now before I jump into this, I just wanna say really quickly, there's somebody out there that talks about concepts like this all the time on his channel, and that's Isaac Arthur. Most of you guys know who he is. I hear his name come up in the comments all the time. And I'm happy to announce that this week I'm gonna be releasing a podcast that includes an interview with Isaac where we're gonna be talking about some of the stuff that I'm gonna be talking about in this video and in some of his videos on similar topics. I'm gonna to be linking to some of his videos up here if you haven't seen them because it will add a whole lot of context to the stuff that I'm talking about here. But I want to kind of preemptively thank Isaac for, for doing this with me. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. It's gonna be a really fun an interesting interview and uh, I hope you all check it out. If you're watching this in the future, I will put a link right here. And if you're watching right now, just hold on and I will uh, announce it later on this week in a live cast. Live cast, live stream. I know what things are. All right, so let's start with a big question. Why colonize planets at all? Now, Elon Musk has been one of the biggest proponents of space colonization lately. He recently announced his plan for SpaceX to go to Mars. And his reasoning behind it is that he thinks that we need to basically back up the hard drive of our species. The fact of the matter is the Earth has had five major mass extinctions throughout its history, and many believe that we're going through a sixth right now of our own making. But even if we totally get our act together and manage to reverse that trend, we're always one super volcano or big asteroid or gamma ray burst away from reaching the end of the history book. And even if we somehow manage to avoid all of those fates, the fact of the matter is someday the sun is gonna reach the end of its lifespan, at which point it's going to expand out into the size of a red giant, basically swallowing the earth. Talk about global warming. <laughs> and while yes, that's not likely to happen for many billions and more years still, spreading our species onto other planets is kind of necessary for us to be able to survive long-term. So what are our options here in the solar system? Well, unfortunately, as Dorothy learned, there's no place like home. We are evolved to live and survive in the very specific conditions of this planet. No matter where we go, there's gonna be compromises and there's gonna be some engineering challenges. So when examining other places in the solar system for us to go to, we wanna to try to get them as Earth-like as possible. And I'm gonna break those down to three core ingredients and that's temperature, air pressure, and gravity. So we have those three variables, gravity, air pressure, and temperature. We're gonna use those to gauge how similar to Earth and how easy these places would be to colonize. And with that in mind, let's get to our first option, the moon. The moon has one sixth the gravity of Earth, has zero air pressure, because there's not really much of an atmosphere at all, and the temperatures are, are pretty extreme, 253 degrees in the sun and negative 253 in the shade. So not optimal. So the engineering challenges of going to the moon, not great, but uh, there are some really good reasons to go there. One reason is that a moon base would be an awesome place to launch to other places in the solar system. The moon swings around the Earth at 2,238 miles an hour. So that's a nice significant boost to get you kind of slingshotted out toward wherever it is you're going in the solar system. Plus the lower gravity means you don't need nearly as much fuel to reach escape velocity. Also the lighter gravity might make it a lot easier to build there. Things that here on Earth would take significant resources and energy to get up into the air wouldn't take nearly as much there, so the machinery wouldn't need to be nearly as robust. The moon is also pockmarked with giant craters, craters that could be used as shelter. It might make it a lot easier to just dome over the top of a crater as opposed to building an entire building there. Also, water ice has been found in some of the polar craters. But to me, one of the biggest advantages of going to the moon is that the communication is instantaneous, just a few seconds delay. As we're gonna talk about a little bit, all the other places, all the other options we have, have a significant delay in communication between the Earth and that colony. But the moon, it's pretty much instantaneous, which means that any kind of emergencies that might come up would have the entire 
team on Earth working instantaneously with the crew and the colonists on the moon base to be able to solve those problems. They wouldn't be completely on their own. That means the moon would be a great place to test out technologies and try some of the things that would be necessary on these other planets and on these other surfaces and be able to work out all the kinks early on so that you can apply those technologies and those, those modes to other places. So even though it doesn't really match any of the variables that we've set up here, I still think I'm kind of amazed that we haven't talked more about going to the moon lately, going back and creating a, a colony or a moon base of some kind, because there's some real advantages to doing that. One place that we have heard a lot about, of course, is Mars. The gravity on Mars is just over one third of Earth's, 38%, not too shabby. The air pressure is extremely low, surprisingly low, 0.6% of Earth's. And the temperature can reach up to 70 degrees Fahrenheit in the day and minus 100 degrees at night. So, not bad. So on Mars, you're looking at about two out of three of the variables. So the upside to going to Mars is that, of course, it's not too far away and it's relatively comfortable temperature-wise. But the thin atmosphere really is a problem because it's thin enough to where it's not sustainable for life without some kind of engineering, but it's also thick enough that you still have to deal with that when landing. And that's why a lot of people, including Elon Musk, talk about terraforming Mars. Now there's a lot more details in Isaac's video, which I'll post right here, but one of the things that you could do, that Elon Musk at least is talking about, is melting the polar ice caps on Mars. Because the polar ice caps on Mars are actually frozen CO2, so if you melt that and put it back into the atmosphere, that would thicken the atmosphere, increase greenhouse gases, and cause it to warm up a little bit. It is obviously much more complicated than that, but it is something that we would have to do if we ever really got serious about staying on Mars. So living on Mars would be pretty extreme, but not nearly as extreme as the next one on our list, Europa. Europa is a moon of Jupiter's. It has only 13% of the Earth's gravity, barely any air pressure, but what's there is mostly oxygen. And the temperature is really cold, negative 260 degree Fahrenheit on average. Now that's a whole bunch of red buzzers, which sounds like this would be a swing and a miss, but there are some reasons that would be interesting to go there. Because the surface of Europa is ice, and underneath that ice is a liquid ocean. It's thought that tidal heating from the massive gravitational pull of Jupiter has warmed up the ice on the inside and has actually caused geysers to erupt, which have been spotted by Hubble. So many people think that Europa is one of the best opportunities to find life here in our solar system. In fact, some theoretical probes that NASA has played around with involve drills that would go through the ice and then swim through the ocean, kind of like a mechanical squid. So if it's warm enough underneath that ice, underwater habitats might be an option. We've seen that humans can survive underwater in things like submarines and underwater habitats here on Earth. That same technology might apply in Europa. One downside to Europa, however, is the fact that it is so close to Jupiter and Jupiter's gravitational field, which is super massive, also carries with it and kind of funnels radiation from the sun, which bombards that planet, might not be the best place to stay long term, but it's a compelling option. But even further out in our solar system, you find one of the most interesting moons out there, and that's Titan. Titan is a moon around Saturn. It's also about 13% of the gravity of Earth, so not too great there. But the pressure, the air pressure, is actually 1.5 times that of Earth. So it's actually livable air pressure. The temperature, however, not so much. It's negative 290 degrees Fahrenheit. Of all the places in our solar system, the air pressure on Titan is the closest to that here on Earth. It's so close that you could literally walk around without a suit on and be just fine. There is one problem. It's so cold that methane turns to liquid and flows in rivers on the surface. So yeah, you might want to wear a sweater. One great reason to go to Titan, however, is that all that methane and other components of the atmosphere would make great rocket fuel. But kind of like what we talked about with the moon, if we had a base on Titan, that could be a great refueling station before heading out into further reaches of the solar system. Or beyond. But I promised you something controversial, so here it is. My last and favorite option for colonizing another place in the solar system is... Venus. Venus has the closest gravity to Earth at 91% of the Earth's gravity. The air pressure, however, is 100 times that of Earth, and the temperature is up to 872 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, I know what you're thinking. This only meets one of the three criteria, so you're like, Joe, how could you possibly choose this as your number one? Because those are numbers down the planet's surface. Up in the air, it's a different story. The density of Venus's atmosphere is insane. The air pressure at the surface would crush you like a soda can. But about 50 kilometers up in the clouds, it's about the same as here. 
Which means just like a ship can float on the top of the water, we could build colonies that would just float on the top of Venus's atmosphere. So then the gravity and the air pressure will be exactly what we're dealing with here on Earth. The temperature would still be high, but manageable. Now I know people will always say, but Joe, if you fell off of this structure, you would die. There's no way around that. And that's true, but again, let's go back to that ship analogy. If you're standing on the side of a cruise ship and you fall overboard, there's a really good chance you're gonna drown. If you drop your cell phone, there's, you're never gonna see it again. Really not that much different than that. And we have cruise ships containing thousands of people and entire navies just floating around out there on the ocean. There's no reason why we couldn't do that on Venus as well. So you're actually getting two of the three criteria, plus the communication gap would be far shorter than anywhere else except for the moon. And because Venus is closer than everywhere else, it would be a lot shorter trip. So there you go, Venus for the win. Incontrovertible, there's no way that anything else could, what? Oh, the clouds are made of sulfuric acid? It, it just rains acid. So you would just be floating in acid. It also doesn't solve the problem of where we would go in a billion years when the sun expands. It would also eat up Mercury as well. But for me anyway, it meets most of the criteria better than any other place in the solar system. Feel free to argue in the comments. Let me know what you think. All right, thanks to all of you for watching. If this is your first time here, I invite you to check out some of my other videos. And if you like those, please hit subscribe because I come back with videos just like this every Monday. Like this. And a real quick shout out to all my supporters, my answer files on Patreon who help uh, support this channel and make it possible. I want to give a quick mention to the people who have uh, signed up in the last week. We've got Christian Latanya Outrum. Andreas Reich, George Waters, and Mason Petrosky. I want to thank you guys for joining. If you guys would like to join, you can go to uh, patreon.com slash answerswithjoe where you can get access to my private vlog that nobody else gets to see. And as always, this video is brought to you by cankerboy.com. You get regular mouth ulcers and canker sores. This is a once a day supplement that helps make those things go away. You don't have to live with the pain. Go check it out, cankerboy.com. You get a risk-free trial. And last but not least, just again, I want to encourage you to go check out the podcast with Isaac Arthur. I will put the link down in the description below once it's ready. And I want to thank Isaac for doing that. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, thank you guys again for watching. Go out there and have an eye-opening week. And I'll see you next Monday. Love you guys. Take care.